Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today we're going to talk all about soap molds, soap loaf molds to be specific and maybe some individual molds but we're going to talk everything soap molds uh, because Ellen Ruth Soap is going to be restructuring a few things and I will talk about that more in this video and then I'm also going to do a whole other video Q and A, uh, just face to face time talking about some of the things that are going to be changing here at Ellen Ruth Soap. But take heart, the YouTube channel is going to keep going strong. I absolutely love YouTube, and I really appreciate all of you for watching. Those of you that have subscribed, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Um, thank you so much. That's a whole other subject. But now we're going to talk soap molds all the way from. I just got these on Amazon. I will leave a link down below. So inexpensive. I got two of these with the lids. I'll show you. I did indeed get two. Uh, these are just little pine boxes, but nice, you know, what is that called? Um, dovetail or I don't know what there's a name for that, but they're well built. They're lightweight and it comes with a little silicone liner. These are very popular. Um, for beginner soapers. I'm not a beginner soaper and I just bought them. Anyway, these are just a wonderful beginner size soap loaf. I think they're wonderful. And I got the ones with the lids because I do like gel phase. And so you can throw that on and put a blanket over. Uh, if you put a blanket on a mold without a lid, it can touch the wet soap and yada yada. We'll talk more about that. So I got these Amazon molds. I also have, this is a wonderful single mold from Essential Depot. We'll talk about that. And of course, my workhorse that you see in pretty much all of my soap videos. My workshop heritage, let's see the logo there. This is the tall, triple skinny, and we'll talk about that. <laughs> and what I like about these molds, um, maybe what I don't like about them, we'll talk about all of that. I am not sponsored in this video at all. Nobody's sponsoring this. These are all molds that I have bought on my own. Um, and so this is my unbiased opinion on soap molds. So. Let me get uh, the camera turned down here and get my molds spread out and we will talk all about soap molds today. All right, we are back to talk about soap molds and I have so many molds in my studio starting from when I first started making soap all the way up to today. Um, and uh, I was trying to figure out how to tackle this. Let's start with the little molds first and then we will move on to the bigger molds. So check this out. This is my pro tip for organizing smaller soap molds. These are just cardboard file folders. I got a pack of like 12 of these on Amazon and they have done such a good job. I always keep one flour mold off to the side so when I'm making soap, if I have piping or any extras, I make a little soap flour out of them. And I used to have a big just uh, storage, you know, Rubbermaid bin and these were all flopping around in there and I couldn't find what I was looking for, yada yada. And I just thought, you know, these stack so nice. So these little file folders have just been a lifesaver for me. So they're up on my shelves back there in my soap studio and it's so easy to find what I need. So that's my pro tip for small soap molds. These are my little owls, which I love. Different flowers. I do my salt bar in these ones. So that's my tip for keeping small soap molds. These are silicone. Um, silicone of any kind makes a wonderful soap mold. You could get creative. Look around at uh, candy molds, cookie molds, all those things. Sometimes you'll find the coolest shapes. Like uh, I got these at Hobby Lobby um, or, oh, a year or two ago during harvest season. And uh, they were over like for the baking aisle. I think you can make little owl muffins or something. And they're the most adorable soap molds. So I always, when it's seasonal, I go and look um, like at Walmart, we'll have a Valentine's aisle and they had heart molds and uh, Christmas tree molds. So look in the baking aisle for silicone molds. They make fantastic soap molds. So speaking of silicone baking molds, I got this Bundt cake pan at Walmart, I think. That's the store that's closest to me. So I reference it a lot. You can find these on Amazon. They're super inexpensive. And this makes the most fun soap cake. I have, I need to do another one because they're so fun. So you pour your soap in here, let it set up for, you know, 24 to 36 hours, unmold it, and then do a drizzly type frosting. How fun is that? And they're flexible, so it's easy to get your soap out. Love it. And the same with a round cake pan. I've done a layer cake before, and these are just flexible baking uh, molds from Amazon, you know, for cake baking. They make terrific soap molds. 
And if you don't like the cutting, the hard thing about these is cutting them is a bit of a trick. And I don't really even have it down to a science yet. So they look so great though when they're whole. And so if you don't like cutting them, uh, this is from Wholesale Supplies Plus. And this one, I can't remember, it's from Amazon, but they're already pre-made slices. So there, it takes the cutting away. But again, they're silicone baking molds. So um, they're just fantastic, easy to find, inexpensive, and it's a really fun way to make soap. You could even do, uh, if you were starting out and wanted a loaf, you could do a bread, a silicone bread loaf pan. So there's the silicone options. <laughs> well, actually, no, these molds are all silicone too. <laughs> but those are kind of the fun bakery type options. All right, here's another fun mold style for soap. Um, this big one here, this big heart is from Brambleberry and I absolutely love it. It's got nice deep sort of um, zippers on the side. It's pretty good about not leaking and it's a beautiful size heart. I love it. I have used this for an embed on top and down in soap. It fits on a standard size soap bar if you want to do it as an embed. This would just make a great soap and then cut it into um, bars. I think it's beautiful. So here's my little ones that I use for embeds. Here's the round one I use for moons a lot and my hearts just because you know who doesn't love a pretty heart. So these column molds you fill them up and then I just trim them off so they fit down in my loaf mold perfectly for a nice little embed. And then here are my sweet little dolphins and I love these. They're so fun. Now what I have noticed is with all of these, I can do cold process and let them set for several days and they're perfect. This little guy is so detailed. I have not successfully been able to unmold him with a cold process just crisply. So I pretty much always do melt and pour for my dolphins. Isn't that cute though? Love it. So these are, again, this one's from Brambleberry. These are from Amazon. <laughs> um, so many soap molds to choose from. Too much fun, right? Get creative. All right, and speaking of creative molds, here are just a couple of examples. I have a really huge PVC pipe mold that I made that holds like five to seven pounds of batter, and I have a whole video on that setup. This is a short form one. Um, <laughs> if you don't need a huge, you know, four foot long PVC pipe. This is a three inch PVC here. This one's a two inch PVC. And what I do for the liners, this is one of those flexible cutting boards that you can get. I get them in multi-packs, super inexpensive. And then I just cut the circumference to fit in here and it unmolds like a dream. Um, I know some soapers that can pour their soap right into a PVC mold and they can get it out of the mold. And you know what, I think they are magical. <laughs> I have not been able to do that with PVC. I've tried all the tricks, freeze it and then bring it out and warm it up and it'll slide right out. I have not had that experience personally. So I do this cutting boards, the flexible cutting boards on my gigantic uh, PVC pipe that I do my shaving soaps in. I do a poly liner, a poly tube liner. I think it's a plumbing item. But um, again, that's all in the video and that makes unmolding super easy also. And so the way that I close the bottoms off of these, these at the hardware store, um, my husband cut them to the height that I want. This one is the proper height for my mold. If I wanna do embeds like my earth bars, I pour like um, earth colors in here and they make wonderful embeds. These make the perfect shaving puck size. Love it, round soap. Round is just fun. Um, let me show you. So I have these little ceramic ramekins, again, from the um, like food and dish aisle at a home goods store, and they fit this size, my two inch PVC, perfectly. So what I do is I just pour a little bit of melt and pour soap, melt it, put it in there, pop this in there, and it seals up and makes the perfect seal on the bottom. So when I pour my soap, there's zero leaking, uh, and it's just so nice. Now this one doesn't fit in there, so you can use something bigger like this mold. <laughs> um, this is just a little extra sample mold. I got this from Be Scented, I think, or Wholesale Supplies Plus. It came with an order. It was like a little bonus item you get. And it's so nice if you have an extra big batch of soap and you have some leftover batter, um, you can pour it in here and it's just great. And it makes like four to five nice little one inch slices. But this size also fits my three inch PVC. Again, just a teeny bit, like a half an inch of melt and pour in the bottom and it seals it right off and it peels right off the bottom, no problem. So PVC, these are homemade molds, 
super inexpensive and they make some beautiful soap options for you know round embeds or round soaps the next mold here that is probably one of the more popular molds that you all have seen this one is from amazon they're very inexpensive i got two of these for 21 or 22 dollars i will uh, leave a link down below it came with the little lid it's got a silicone liner my husband drilled holes in the bottom for me um, some of them come with holes in this one didn't and he just took a big drill bit and drilled me some holes to get this out when this is full of soap apparently it can be tough to get out of here i have not even used this yet <laughs> but i'm excited to try so and it comes with a little lid so you want to put the lid on and put a blanket over if you want gel phase i just think it's fantastic and it is a tall skinny tight mold not quite as tall and not quite as skinny as this one but it's a little taller and skinnier than an average size bar so this holds approximately 42 ounces of soap is what the uh, manufacturer said and it's very lightweight. It's made out of some sort of very light wood, but I think these are fantastic. And they either come with these pink or purple liners. I see them a lot on Instagram. It's just a fantastic, basic, great starter mold. And I love them. All right, I'm gonna move on to my next mold that I did for years and years. And this thing is a workhorse. I got this from Essential Depot. It's got a stainless steel basket on the outside and a thick silicone liner on the inside. And this is so sturdy. Um, so the Essential Depot says that this mold can hold between four to six pounds of soap batter in there, whether or not you fill it all the way to the top or even do, if you do like a high top piping on there, you could fit even more. But these are so sturdy and they're stackable and I have several, I have, gosh, half a dozen of these and I love them. And this is a standard size soap bar. So it's not a tall skinny, they're just wonderful. So that's my Essential Depot mold been a workhorse and now these two freestanding silicone molds I got this one is from Be scented and again this one it's a small loaf and I can't remember if I got it from wholesale supplies plus or Be scented it came as a bonus with a big order that I made um, and it's so nice it's like a catch-all mold <laughs> I love it so if I'm doing like multiple soaps in a day and I have like new recipes where there's extra batter sometimes I'll just layer it all up in here and let it harden and make fun little rainbow soaps for the family um, and then this one I got from Be Scented, and it is a tall, skinny, freestanding. Now, the only thing with these types of molds, these silicone ones, is they can bow out just a little. If you get it full to the top, the weight of the soap, and it's warm, it can go like that. Um, I've seen some solutions are you can uh, put, get a piece of Velcro and strap around a rubber band, set it between you know two molds, just kind of, or put books on either side of it. So there are options. If you have a problem with a mold like this and it's getting a little bowed out in the middle, you know, you can prop it up with stuff. That's not a big deal. And one of the things that I have when I get a, a soap mold like this, and I'm not sure how much soap can fit into it, normally when you buy soap mold, the manufacturer will tell you the ounces or the grams or the poundage that it can hold, but sometimes I forget and I'm in the middle of stuff. So let me give you an equation for how to figure out how, how much your soap mold can handle. Okay, here's the non-equation one, <laughs> and I have been, I've been known to do this. I will put this on my scale, tear it out, and fill it up with water, and then I know how much it holds. Water and liquid oils or oils have a, a very slight difference in total volume. Uh, oil is lighter than water, that's why it floats on the water, but they're very close. So if I get a liquid, you know, a water volume for the top of this, I know I'm gonna be really close with my soap volume. I mean, it's really tiny discrepancy, so I don't sweat that. <laughs> but if you're very particular, you do need to note that water and oil have different weights. <laughs> so. Here's the equation part. Um, and again, this is not exact. So we're not doing total like precise science class here. This is a quasi science class. So what you do is we're gonna work in centimeters because centimeters equals to grams. So the measurement of centimeters equals to the weight in grams. And then if you wanna convert grams to ounces like I do often, or if you like measuring in grams, you're good to go. So you wanna take the height in centimeters by the width in centimeters, by the length in centimeters. And you times those together, and that is the total square centimeter measurement. 
and that's your grams. So whatever that is. I did uh, this one and it came out to around 630 centimeters, which would be 630 grams, which is 22 ounces approximately. And that's exactly what this holds right to the brim. Now I don't fill my soap molds that full. I usually go a little bit shy. So 22 ounces, I would do 20 ounces or 19. But that is an easy equation. You just take the, the <laughs> width by the length by the height, times those together, those are your square centimeters, and that equates to your square grams, which is the weight. So it's a good way to um, figure out your own, if you ever lose the information on your molds or you need it real quick and you don't wanna go look up the website, you can do that if you're good at math, <laughs> you can do that. So there's my equation for soap mold figuring. Let me pull over. This is what you're gonna see in 99% of my soap videos is this one right here. This is the tall, triple skinny, I think they call it the pro soaper now, but it's the tall, triple skinny from Workshop Heritage. I get three loaves out of this mold and then I cut the three loaves into bars. Um, if you, I cut my bars at about an inch and a quarter thickness. I don't do them one inch, I go, I go a little thicker. I like a bulky bar of soap, that's what I like. Um, so I get, with my sample pieces, I can get 24 full-size bars and then lots of samples and quarter, you know, the end slices off of it. Or if I don't have a swirl in there, like I'm doing my calamine bars, it's a solid color, I can get 27 bars of soap out of here with the width that I cut them. You can, they say on the website, you can get 30 bars if you do a one inch bar. So that's the tall triple. And I didn't start with this big one. I went for the double. I went from a single loaf to this. It's the double skinny mold. And sorry, there's baby powder on the inside. I'll talk about that in a second. So this is two loaves of the exact same size. So again, I, because I cut mine thicker, I'm not gonna get 20 bars here. I only get, what, eight and eight. I only get 16 bars plus all my samples and my quarter size for my end bundles. And I like all the little extras and I love to send samples out. So I like to cut thick and keep the ends for samples and stuff. But this one is the double. Let me tell you about the baby powder that's in here. <laughs> when I first got my workshop heritage mold here and I poured my soap in here and I was so excited to unmold it and it would not budge out of here. I mean, I took a spatula and it wouldn't budge. And it was because it was new silicone on new wood and then the heat of the soap and everything, it just sort of made it stick. So there's two options. Some people will use like Vaseline or coconut oil and crease it, which is fine. But when I called the manufacturer, I called Workshop Heritage, contacted them. I said, what am I gonna do? My silicone got stuck and he said, baby powder. So I baby powder my soap mold and it just slides right out. Easy peasy, I've never had a problem since that. So I keep a jar of baby powder off to the side. Got this at Walmart um, and it doesn't touch the soap. It's always on the outside and then I wipe the inside out so the baby powder isn't part of the ingredients. <laughs> But that baby powder is my trick. I mean, literally, the molds just slip right out. So if you ever watch any of my videos and you see this white powder after I unmold it, that's what that is. It's baby powder. <laughs> so these molds come with, you can just get the mold uh, with no lid. You can get the lid. They will treat it for you, I think. I just get raw wood when I order from them. Um, but they do have some sort of oil treatment that they'll do on there for you too. They have several options. I like the company um, and I've been so happy with these. They're pretty sturdy. Let me grab my log splitter and talk about that. All right, here is my wonderful log splitter. And uh, I got this from Workshop Heritage also. I got the bundle that came with the triple skinny mold and the log splitter. Um, and it comes with the wire all the way on the top and then you have to set it where you want it. And so you take, you know, it depends on if you got the standard mold, the super skinny, or the triple skinny, just the regular skinny, depending on how thick you want them. And you just count your notches up. I measured, mine is at the height of, let's see here. Mine is two and a half inches is what I just, what the, um, 
division in the three loaves, so two and a half inches high, and then I counted my little notches. I even put a little Sharpie mark there where the wire goes. I have never had to change this wire. I'm so thankful, haven't had to do that yet, but if and when it breaks, I'll bring you along as I change the wire. So this, it's a nice slippery um, surface, that kind of non-stick chopping board material. Um, and I just throw this little piece of wax paper in there. It just makes cleanup easier. It slides a lot easier and it doesn't make a big soap rub on here. So I do that for cleanup reasons. It just, it's cheap, it's easy, why not? So this is my log splitter. Um, you don't need one of these. Um, if you, you know, these are a little pricey, I think, uh, but if you're making soap slabs that need to be split, it's a good investment. But if you don't have one of those, this lovely tool is a cake leveler. I got it on Amazon and it's got a very thin wire. And I use this to do diagonals when I'm doing my freedom bars or um, and when I need to cut a soap loaf on a diagonal. <laughs> That's what this is for. But you could use this to split a log if you wanted. Just, you know, you get it measured up there and you go real slow and it makes a nice, you know, straight line down. So this is a cake leveler. I will leave a link down below. This would be your cheap option for a log splitter if you have a slab mold and you don't have a splitter yet. <laughs> get you one of these. Um, and the reason I like this better than a knife is that it's just a very thin line. If you use a knife, most knives, most knives have a thicker edge on the back side than the blade. So as you're pushing down through your soap, it's wedging it out and it can crack if you have a very hard bar of soap. Even that slight of a, of a um, expansion, if you're cutting you know, down a long soap, by the time you get down here, it's opening up here and it can crack your soap, which is, by the way, one of my issues with cutting the soap cake. <laughs> Even with the skinniest knife I have in my kitchen, I'll go and smuggle it down here and use it for my soap. It can still cause splitting, um, and I have not figured out a graceful way to cut my soap cakes yet but it's a work in progress. And I have used this before to cut the soap cake in half. And then once I get it in half, I can get it in my single bar soap cutter. Um, so that's a whole other story. Anyway, this is pretty much it for, for my soap molds. Uh, hope this wasn't too repetitive for any of you that already have multiple molds. You know what I'm talking about already, but there it is. My soap studio is full of molds. <laughs> the good kind of molds, soap molds. All right, well, that is a wrap for my soap mold video. Uh, if I missed anything that you wished I had talked about, please leave a comment down below. Let me know if there's something you want to see that I forgot to mention. Um, you'll be seeing these in upcoming videos. I'm going to start making smaller batches on some. And there are a few things you can do in a single mold that you can't do in a loaf mold like angled soaps, putting it on a mold. If you do that on a big loaf mold, only one loaf will get uh, get the diagonal in it and all that. So we'll talk about that when we get there, but you'll be seeing these two little cuties in more upcoming videos. And thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you taking the time and I hope you have a wonderful day.